Hello, YouTube friends. I figured this morning, it's, it's morning here, it's about 8.30, uh, that I'd tell you a little story that we've been laughing in here about. Uh, and then later on today, I will be putting up a video showing you my little route that I walk every day where I go get fresh meat or chicken and vegetables or whatever we're needing, uh, where I go every day. And I figured I'd let you guys see how a little bit of how it is in Columbia, at least in our neighborhood. Uh, some good, fascinating things about Columbia and a lot of things that are real different, very different than what is your normal normality and what was once mine and will be again. Uh, but right now I'm going to tell you a funny story. Um, when I was little, um, and you hear Rocky always crying for something. This German Shepherd's always crying for something. Uh, and we love him for it. Yeah. When, I, when he's not crying or about something, we're worrying. And he doesn't cry all the time, but a lot of the time. He's a crybaby. Uh, when I was a little boy, we used to go from northern, central North Carolina down to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And uh, a lot of you are going to know about Myrtle Beach. Well, Myrtle Beach used to be way more popular than it is today. Uh, and is popular today. However, there used to be a great big, huge, beautiful, gigantic pavilion with all these rides and carnivalesque uh, uh, just great stuff, wonderful for a child. I was so blessed to be able to go there so often as a child. And my dad, uh, although it was a little over two hours away, loved taking us down there almost every weekend uh, during the spring and the summers. And uh, God bless him for that. He wanted us to have and experience things that he did not get to have nor experience. And that's the way all parents should be today. So anyway, we went down to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. We're down there staying in the normal hotel. I could make a story on this hotel alone because my father almost purchased it. Um, but we're down there at the hotel and some neighbors followed us down. So we're two families in two separate hotel rooms. But some neighbors were like, hey, we would like to come this time. My dad was, come on. And it would be better for us kids. They had kids our age for us to play. Well, we went down to the pavilion one evening and... Uh, we were getting on some rides, and I was a wee bit too young, maybe six or seven years old, maybe eight. Uh, back then, I'm not even sure they even had, at least in South Carolina, the lines where you got to be this big. Uh, you know, they didn't go by age to get on a ride. They went by your height uh, to make sure you'd be secured in a ride size-wise. So anyway, we get on this damn thing called the octopus. And some of you that's going to ring a bell, you're going to know exactly what that is. I'll try to explain for those of you that don't. Think of a cylinder here uh, in the center, just a cylinder. And arms coming out, and these arms are going up and down, up and down, as the whole thing's spinning around. And the cart that you're seated in 
is spinning around as well. So you're spinning around like this, but going up and down and, and around a bigger circumference. It's wild, and I damn sure didn't like it at six or seven years old. Uh, I didn't like it enough that I started yelling to the top of my voice curse words at the guy that was operating the ride. And that thing would come down and spin, and he was looking up. He had that lever in his hand. He's looking up as I come by. He is laughing his fanny off. Uh, and, of course, he's not going to stop that ride. So it goes up, and it goes around, and it comes down, and I'm shouting profanities like, Stop this ride, you SOB. And then we go back around, and we're up, and we're down, and up. And then it comes back around to him. You B, stop this ride. You know, and it kept going on for the two or three minutes or whatever the last of the ride was. Then it come down, police. You know, it would come back spinning down. I'd be hollering for police. And we had police there. And everybody congregated there. By the time I got off that ride, probably... 30% of the people in this huge pavilion with all these rides that must have been in different venues, it must have been in the hundreds. Uh, thousands of people were just enveloped around me and our neighbor's mother who got on the ride with me. And, uh, you know, Look, it, going through it, I was like, I want to get back to that hotel room. I am embarrassed because everybody was laughing. Ha ha. And, uh, for a little boy, that wasn't a good thing. Uh, of course, then, you know, then later in the day, I'm back out and at it again, or that next day, back out and at it again. And, uh, like nothing happened. I was that young and uh, that careless, uh, careless about those types of embarrassments, you know. And uh, what got me to thinking about this story was even a better story because like father, like son, I was not here in Columbia during Joe's incident. Uh, but... Joe's mother, my wife, uh, had to take him to get some blood work. And he's thinking he was around six to seven years old as well. So the lady where Carmen took him, uh, he had to go to a lab where a nurse would draw the blood. And you know how it is. Sometimes they can't see a vein or... Uh, and, some people are not as good at drawing the blood as others. And they missed his vein and kept rolling on it. And she poked him two or three times. And finally, Joe, at six or eight years old, worse than me, mind you, he's sitting there doing this. He's going to kill them all. And uh, threatening them. Uh, all of you are going to be dead. I'm going to kill the hell up out of all of you. And right about the time he's showing his fanny and his incident, we believe that the police, the best of their recollection, the police were just walking down the sidewalk and they stopped him. Of course, they came in because they hear somebody yelling, even though it was a kid, I'm going to kill you all. None of you are safe now. You're not touching me again. And uh, way worse than that. And uh, they come in, and I was like, oh, my God, what did the police do? And they were like, well, they were laughing. Because <laughs> once they got in there and realized that it was little, little Joe at six or seven years old that was causing all the commotion, uh, to end the stories, I lived through mine uh, and went on to a somewhat okay life after that terror that I experienced at the pavilion in Myrtle Beach. 
And uh, Joe, after the terror and the bloodletting at the lab in Florida Blanca, uh, he went on and has had a very productive life after that those terroristic acts perpetrated against him as well. So we're all living and we're all good, but it is amazing to me how a, a dad's son can be so much, much like their dad and do the same thing. So I've even got another story that's even worse than mine or Joe's with my daughter. That, uh, and I'll give that on another day. Uh, but she really took the cake and was way more vigorous in defending herself than Joe or I could have ever been uh, when she was eight years old. But I'll save that story for another day. So folks, maybe later today we'll have a video uploaded. I'm going to give you a little neighborhood walk where you can see kind of the neighborhood uh, and just come with me on my journey and my walk to uh, their grocery store, the little markets that I do typically every single morning. Uh, so hope you come along for the ride on that one. You can get to see what a uh, typical Colombian neighborhood looks like, what the stores are like and whatnot. So come join us for that video, which will probably be up later today or this evening. Thanks, everybody, and much blessings to you. We appreciate you watching the channel, and uh, we hope that you like and subscribe. And um, thank you so much.